Hi and welcome to another narration presented by yours truly, Cryptid's Roost. Please be so kind as to throat punch the like button and smack the ass of the subscription button as well. And remember to tap the notification bell and then select all. That way you'll receive all notifications each time I upload a new video. Oh and don't forget to share the video far and wide. This will all help with YouTube's algorithm and will help promote the channel more. Now if you're going to leave a dislike, please be so kind as to comment why. That way I can review what you didn't like about the video and I can possibly make changes in future videos. Thank you. If you enjoy listening to the following story, be sure to pop over to the author's Reddit profile and drop them a line, or even give them a glowing review. I'm sure they would appreciate it. The link to their Reddit profile will be below in the description. So grab your coffee, sit back, and enjoy the show. And don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not. Some advice from a veteran monster hunter. Part 4. The Finale. This fantastic story is written by Greyheart, a wonderful author over on Reddit's No Sleep subreddit. I'm back again. My son is busy and my daughter is writing her post, supposedly. So I'm back with a very recent story from Canada. I was recently messaged by a young man named James. He told me that I saved his life. When I asked how he knew I was the man who saved him, he said, You swore as much as you, as you do on here. Can't fucking argue with that. Now this guy and his group of friends were camping in Canada. This is some classic college party type shit everyone. Tents, red solo cups, horny twenty somethings and wendigo. Okay, maybe the wendigo being there is my kind of party instead. Fuck it, here we go, brace yourselves, and if you're squeamish when it comes to gore, don't read. The Wendigo are nasty fuckers. I was on my way to Riding Mountain National Park in Canada. It's relatively close to the US and Canadian border, so I decided to go check it out. I had heard some reports from Connie, a park ranger and old friend, that some hikers had gone missing. Two men wearing blue parkas went into the park and they never came out. Connie suggested foul play and I hunt people as well as monsters so I decided to give her a visit. I went up and had a drink with her and she told me that she actually suspected far worse. She was in the office when she called so she couldn't say so out loud but she believed it was Wendigo. I think they're nesting. I don't know how long they've been in the park but the activity has been more recent and more common. Wendigo nest like bees. There are those that stay to watch the hive and those that go pollinate flowers. Only instead of pollinating flowers, they abduct unwary campers. Sometimes the Wendigo do them the mercy of eating them. Sometimes they don't. Either way, the Wendigo wins. Now, if they're nesting, then they have actually a steady food source and a monarch. In northern national parks like this one, Wendigo are actually a more common problem than they're made out to be. More times it's one or two and they kill deer, elk or the occasional bear and don't come into contact with humans. But there is the odd Wendigo that is more ambitious and they become monarchs. Killing and eating your own kind is a taboo in our culture, but if a Wendigo can do it, it's a sign of strength. Connie had been keeping tabs on the Wendigo population in the park. They were under control, but then summer came. All the activity drove the fuckers out, and a total of three groups of campers had gone missing in the past five months. One group of five teenagers, the two hikers, and a family of three were all missing. They were all dead, no question. But I agreed to go anyway. I told Connie I would look for the missing campers and be careful. But I wasn't going to bother. If they were still alive, they weren't going to be for much longer. What I was going to do is find the nest and destroy it. 
as well as Kalevi Las Wendigo in it. Connie took me deep within the park to the area she said the missing hikers were and left me to search. As I walked around the deep forest, the sun started to set, but even in the dim light, I could see the telltale signs of Wendigo inhabitation, pools of blood and chunks of meat. Wendigo can't digest food, they are eternally hungry. They eat, but can't process the prey, so they vomit up the remnants. Those puddles were the aftermath of a Wendigo having a nice snack. I knelt down to examine the puddle and found tufts of fur and a singular yellow eye. Seems the Wendigo ate a wolf. So I kept walking. I heard voices. I crept over to the source of the noise and peered from between the brush at a campsite. There was a large fire and the scent of weed hung on the air. Around the fire were five kids, two girls and three guys. They were joking and laughing like nothing was going on, even though they were deep into Wendigo territory. The fire was probably the only thing keeping them at bay. These must be the five missing 20-somethings. They weren't missing, not yet, just stoned off their goddamn minds, unlucky as all hell. Hey, pass the weed, a girl with pink hair called from across the fire. A burly guy with a beard and curly hair tossed her the bag, but the throat came up short and the prize bag landed in the fire. Shit! Water, guys! Save the weed! One yelled. Another girl with piercings glinting in the firelight poured water on the pit and it was out. The one thing keeping them safe was gone. All to save some fucking weed. Guess your guardian angel didn't help that time, Andy, someone said to the guy who threw the weed. He doesn't help with basic shit like that, Andy said. They still have no fucking clue what was about to happen. I ran out of the tree line, lit a flare and tossed it towards the group. I covered my eyes and heard a shriek. When I looked back, I could see all five of the kids huddled together, almost upon them, bathed in the red glow of my flare was a wendigo. It still had the remnants of a parka upon its back. Guess that clears up one of the hikers then. What the fuck? What is that? I heard one of the girls yell. I pulled my pistol from my holster and fired three shots into the wendigo. The bullets burst into flame on impact and the creature began to scream. I plugged two more incendiary rounds into the Wendigo's chest and it fell back, twisting and convulsing. I got closer and pulled my knife from its holster. The tough hide was already weakened by the fire and the creatures do best in the cold. I slammed my knife into its heart and every muscle of the monster seemed to tighten. Then it was still. I turned and faced the kids. They seem more scared of me than the bastard I put down. Holy shit! Andy, I changed my mind, Pink Hair said. I'm not an angel, just a hunter, I said, reloading my pistol. A guy with shoulder-length brown hair looked me up and down. You don't look like a hunter, man. And you fucked that thing up like you knew how to do it. You basically have a handheld flamethrower, for Christ's sake. He pushes his glasses up onto his face. Make a new fire and stay close to it. They won't attack if you get the fire large enough, I said gruffly. Hold on, man. You know a lot about these things, right? The tallest amongst the group asked. He towered above them and me. Yes, but I don't want a group of tagalongs, especially you five. They all stood together and met my eyes. Like it or not, we're coming with you. We're safe with you, Pinky said. I had to chuckle at that one. Safe and my job don't mix. And if I'm not safe, they definitely aren't. Fine, but where I'm going, there's more. To be honest, I didn't take time to learn their names. James told me them after the fact. I just attributed the first thing that came to mind to the kid. Pinky was Ali, Beardy was Andy, Glasses 
was Mike, Tall Guy was James, and Piercings was Jess. So there I went. I gave each of them a flare and told them to light it when I told them to. I lit mine and they stayed glued to my ass as I walked through the forest. I followed the pools of blood visible by the moonlight reflected off of them. Eventually we stumbled upon a cave entrance, the perfect place for a wendigo nest. I took out my crossbow and peered down the sights. The cave opened into a massive chamber dimly lit by moonlight. We snuck in and were greeted by the stench of rotting meat. Fuck, that's nasty, Jess whispered behind me. Stay low and stay quiet, I whispered fiercely back. As we took cover behind some rocks, I heard crying. I looked over to the far corner of the chamber through my scope and saw a wendigo holding a man by the shoulders. Another walked up and pried his mouth open. How a human becomes a wendigo is through the consumption of human flesh corrupted by the wendigo. They feed their human captives remnants of their kills daily. They're like really fucked up mother birds. The wendigo clamped his mouth over the man's. Soon all that filled the cavern was the man's gurgling and his family's screams. What the hell is happening? James said. The monarch is going to begin the gestation process, I said back. Man, who the fuck are you? How are these things getting pregnant? Andy hissed, scared. Shut the fuck up, Beardy, I said. Beardy, he said behind me. Mike, you have a beard too, so why am I Beardy? He called me glasses earlier. Just go with it, I guess, Mike whispered back. I didn't even bother to tell them to be quiet. I was watching the Wendigo monarch. Killing the monarch would send the nest into anarchy. Wendigo that had turned by another Wendigo are linked. This alpha had turned a total of four people. I killed one and there was another one holding the man the monarch was feeding, which left one. Fuck. I walled round and pulled my pistol from my holster and my knife from its sheath. We were missing a Wendigo and it was coming from outside. Follow me. Now. I said. What about the people they captured? Mike said. What about them? Save the lives you can. We can't help them, but I can help you five. Now move it. I said. I led the group back through the tunnel straight into the Wendigo. It snarled at me and I plugged it four times in the chest. I jumped forward and sunk my knife deep into its heart, through the weakened hide. The Wendigo heard the shot go off, no question. I told them to run out of the cavern. They didn't need to see what I was doing. I reached into my bag and pulled out a brick of C4. I stuck it to the cave and stepped out into the open air. Is that fucking C4? Who are you? Jess yelled, throwing her hands up into the air. Not important, I said as I went to blow the charge, trapping the Wendigo inside. Wait, Mike is in there, James called out. My brother isn't out here. I sighed and ran back into the cavern, my pistol at the ready. Looking in the dim light, I saw the red glow of Mike's flare on the other side of the cavern, trying to free the prisoners. He was waving the flare from side to side, keeping the two Wendigo at bay. He was carrying a child in one arm and a woman was following close behind him. Glasses, you fucking dumbass! Get over here! I roared, firing my pistol at the white sunken figures chasing Mike. A Wendigo managed to slash Mike's ankle and he stumbled, bleeding. He flung the flare behind him. He gave the woman a child and pushed her onward, still limping from the wound to his leg. She ran towards me and out of the cave. Mike was still hobbling on his one good leg when the fuckers got to him. They grabbed his legs and pulled him down, claws skinning the flesh below the knees. Mike screamed and his glasses fell off his face to skid across the rough floor. The two Wendigo pulled Mike up and tore his stomach open. The fuckers began eating Mike while he was still alive. His screams 
turned into a gurgle when they tore into his throat. I turned and ran from the cave, swearing. As I left, I detonated the charge, crushing the Wendigo. I stopped and caught my breath. James approached me and I just shook my head. We left that park with one less twenty-something. He stayed to help two strangers and he died so they could live. I'm not going to give you a bullshit speech about morals. I'll just tell you now, Mike was a hero. I'm not, but he was. But if being a hero means being eaten alive by Wendigo, I'll stick to being an immoral piece of shit. And to all the comments thanking me, if you want to thank someone, thank Mike for saving a woman and her child. And thank James for telling me to share his brother's story. I'm just doing my job. You don't thank the garbage man, and that's all I am. The supernatural garbage man. Don't forget, if you enjoyed that story, be sure to pop over to the author's Reddit profile and drop them a line. Or even give them a glowing review. I'm sure they really would appreciate it. The link to their Reddit profile will be below in the description. Don't forget to check out the merch store. The link will be in the description and also in the video thumbnail. If you would like an honourable mention, send in a snapshot of yourself with your purchase and I'll feature it in one of the videos. Have you written a creepypasta story you would like me to narrate? Have you had any cryptid sightings, paranormal or supernatural encounters, or even had a creepy or terrifying situation you would like to share? You could submit your stories, encounters or any other mail to cryptidsroost at gmail.com If you wish to remain anonymous, that's fine with me. I also have a Facebook group, Twitter, Reddit and Discord. And if you would like to support the channel and help make it grow, my PayPal is paypal.me slash cryptidsroost and any and all donations would be gratefully received. Again, that will also be below. So don't forget, where fear is, happiness is not.